everybody, welcome to Effortless. I am your host, Spiegel, Dr. Spiegel, if you're nasty, and over there is Mr. Piddle. We are not calling it Effortless this week, by the way, oh, because we why? just put way too much effort into this. Yeah, you know what? Because this is take two, okay? So, so this is like the effort show now, because we just deleted like 15 minutes of great stuff because of audio. Great. <laughs> so, well, it was good. It was no, four out of five. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. He's lying. Well, there was some good stuff at the beginning. Oh, that's true. Which, which we're going to try to replicate right now, hopefully. Um, so so I'm really full, so I'm going to be like really tired sounding today, probably, because I could just go take a nap. All the food I ate. I had uh, Panera Bread for lunch, which I didn't mention in the first show. We went and we got... The uh, first show that no longer exists. Yeah, it's the lost episode, and you're never going to hear it ever, because we deleted it, so... Maybe someday it will be as sought no, after... There, as there is no someday. We deleted it. It's not... It's gone forever. No one can go back and find that file. Mm, people break into our houses, steal our hard drives. Do a... I, do they'll just control, control Z until it, like, shows up. I have no up. idea. No idea. <laughs> um, no, but I had Panera Bread, and my wife and I, we went and we got uh, two broccoli cheddar soup bread bowls, and it's just so good. But then you eat the whole bread bowl, and then you're like, oh, there's just a bread bowl just sitting in my stomach like a rock, and that's how I'm going to feel for the rest of the day. The rest that of the day. That actually sounds really good. So No, it's fantastic, but um, you know, I also feel like I'm dying. So speaking of dying, uh, you've been eating a lot of macar macaroni and cheese lately, which is going to result in your untimely death. Is that is that correct? Actually, I haven't eaten any of my mac and cheese yet. Not it yet. Is, it's, it's going to start very soon, though. A mac and cheese marathon of mighty purport. <laughs> I have no idea. It's <laughs> exciting. Um, so wait, what, so what is this story? Your, your girlfriend like posted this. Sorry, ladies, he's not single. Uh, she like posted this on your Facebook wall, and I got really concerned because I have recently eaten a lot of Kraft macaroni and cheese. What was the story again? Were you digging through the trash can? Was I digging through the... No, what are you talking like, about? Trying to find the box? Oh, is that one oh, no, of the no, ones no. I was... No, because we already threw it out, and the, the garbage man came, like, yesterday. Oh, man. So I, I'm not going to the dump to find a box of macaroni and cheese. I figured you'd, like, give the garbage man a call. Hey. Hey, man, I was I just wondering if you I saw the date on this uh, box of mac and cheese. What, you don't think he sifts through your garbage? I mean, I'm sure he does. We have a lot of interesting things in our garbage that are, like, probably pretty valuable. Like, I threw out all my Amiibos the other day and uh whoa so this ma so this mac and cheese story no i just want yeah. to yeah so uh, so this yeah, mac and cheese story uh craft foods recalled 242,000 cases of the original that's, flavor that's cases not boxes that's cases which yes, is multiple cases. boxes cases and these cases apparently held 6.5 million boxes of mac and cheese oh my goodness because uh some of the boxes had metal inside of them hey how many calories is that 6.5 million times like how many calories is a box like 800 altogether i feel like it's like a thousand yeah so 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 that's what 6.5 billion calories of macaroni and cheese have been uh recalled think about all the people that could have fed aka the average obese person's intake in one year whoa oh, oh my god so wow that was uh okay that was me sorry that was me i'm sorry mean spiegel is in the house today <laughs> So, uh, hey, I'm a doctor. I you guess, can trust me. You I shouldn't be eating all those people, fatty foods. I guess eight people found metal inside the boxes. So they did an entire recall on a huge portion. It's like August to, I don't know, several months worth. Who cares? That reminds me, that reminds me of the time that I went to Taco Bell and I got one of those chicken flatbread sandwiches. Do you remember those? The chicken flatbread sandwiches? They were so good. Oh, they yes. They were the best thing yes. in the world. And they're gone now. But they have this uh, like kind of, kind of chicken. It's like grilled chicken that they would put in there. And um, one one time I was eating one, and I found a bone in there. And I, I brought it up. I'm like, hey, there was a bone in my chicken. And they're like, well, that's weird. It's supposed to be boneless. So, so that's <laughs> my Taco answer. Bell story for the day. What a story. What were we talking Thrilling, about? Thrilling, captivating. Talking about mac and cheese. So pretty much oh, people, yeah. if you have, you know, like 30 boxes of mac and cheese in your pantry like I do, check that they're not full of metal i mean how does that even work like do you, is it is there a date like in between certain dates uh it's the i don't know i don't know all right Come well this on. has been a, this, this has is... been an ineffective public service announcement from the effortless show so 
or the effort show, I guess, as we're calling it today. I mean, as with all things, I'm not really going to put put much effort towards it, except for this episode, and I'm probably not even going to look. Probably should, but I'm probably not. You're just going to eat it and just be like, well, if it ha- the, this is a uh, this is natural selection at work right here. This is what it's all right about. Right here, Darwin would be proud. Uh, so okay, we have a show to do here, so let's get off the food. Although people seem to like when we talk about food, so. I don't do know. you eat mac and cheese when you play games? I do. Mac and cheese is one of my favorite things to eat when I marathon through games. Like yesterday, and I'll get to this in a little bit because we have 52 games in 52 weeks, but I had the day off of work on both Wednesday and Thursday. I played a lot of video games. And I ate a lot of mac and cheese, so and I did absolutely nothing else. So I gained breakfast, about five lunch, pounds too. Dinner. Well, not breakfast, lunch, dinner. Second lunch, brunch. <laughs> second lunch, second dinner, brunch. Tea, yeah, dessert. Tea time. In, Macaroni and cheese tea, flavored ice cream. You uh, just sort of put some mac and cheese in a <laughs> teacup and drink drink it. Oh, I stir my tea with uh, elbow macaroni. So, so yeah, um, and that, I also boil my noodles in the tea as it's boiling. So, uh, what are these games that you got around to? Well, we'll talk about that later. Because I hear we you got around to a lot. I did. I, I, little teaser, I beat three games this week, and I started two more. So, and uh, the spoiler, um, three of them are replays. But I also played two new games, which I can't wait to talk about. All um, right. But we'll get to that later, because, unfortunately, we don't have a game to add to the broken games. I mean, maybe that's a good thing. We don't have a game to add to the broken games counter of 2015. So I guess that's a good thing, right? I mean, what what games came out this week? Hey, uh, we got through uh, a full week without a n- new broken game being released. It's like how the NFL got, went a whole month without having a player arrested. Oh. And then Doriel Green Beckham got arrested for speeding or something. So that that ended that streak. <sighs> Too quick. Yeah. Uh, there is a motorcycle outside my house right now, so that's what that noise is if you guys are hearing that. We, unfortunately, we don't have time to stop the show and wait for that idiot to go away because I have to go to work soon. But in the meantime, we're going to be talking about our top 50 games instead of the uh, broken games because we're only talking about good games this week, it looks like. Um, looks like it. That's sort of so exciting. So should we bother recapping our top 50 so far? That's kind of a long project. Um, we'll put it in the description, maybe. Yeah. Well, well you can just say it real quick. No, because I already forget them and I don't have it in front of me, so... Perfect. <laughs> this is effortless. The so, effort uh, episode. Let's go ahead. Last week we covered our uh, 50 through 46. 50 this through week, 46. 45 through 41. Yes. Oh, I've got some good ones. This. Oh, this is a good one for me. I like this. I've got three new games from last year's list on, on this year's. This is all right. Let's hear it. Yeah. Well, do you want me to go first? It, absolutely. Okay. So my number 45, and uh, this is a good one for a couple people that, uh, that listen to the show, they'll love it, is Journey on PS3. Journey is a game that I played this year for the first time. I think I covered it for 52 and 52. I believe did you I? did. I think I did. Um, and this is an amazing game. And uh, I mean, I've already talked about it this year. I played it with Flower as well and Flo. But Journey is a game where you are a lone... Uh, traveler and you are going to the top of a mountain and as soon as the game starts you don't know anything all you, you don't know who you are you don't know like if the game is supposed to be anything you just the the game zeroes in on this mountain and it zooms out and it pans to you and like that's you just go and it's like the most basic game design you could possibly think of but it's it's brilliant in that way too because along the way it, there's all these metaphors for life and death and i don't want to spoil it too much but um but it's really really good it is quite the experience. It's an amazing experience, and it's it's really more of an experience than a game. And I don't know, it made my list sort of by default just because of how much I enjoyed it. And I played it again. Uh, I played it again like immediately after, so I could really get it the second time. It only takes about an hour and a half to two hours to complete. So basically, um, it's just really worth it. It's worth your time. It's worth your money. Get Journey. It's on PS4. It's on PS3. So. Yeah, just play Journey, and, and you will enjoy the same experience that I did, hopefully. Oddly, I really enjoyed it the first time I played it, but I can't go back to it. It's really weird. It, it does kind of... I feel like it could also stand alone, just like I can remember that forever. I don't think I really need to play it again, which is a shame because the collection costs 20 bucks, and I'm certainly not going to go play Flow again, but <laughs> still. Anyway, yeah, that's Flo my 45. All right. So uh, mine 
45 is a game that I originally played on the PlayStation 3, but now I own it on the almighty PC, and that is Mirror's Edge. Ooh, uh, that's far down from last year, if I remember your list correctly. Uh, yeah, it's fallen a little bit, and part of that is just because... Yeah, you, you had it at 35 last year. Part of that is just because I added new stories, or new stories, new games with better stories. And uh, going back and replaying it a little bit, just the, it feels more, I don't know, constrained, too linear again. You know I'm a sucker for freedom in games. Yeah, are, are you excited for uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst while we're kind of on the subject? I don't know whether to be or not because pretty much everything Electronic Arts has done in the last five years, I've absolutely hated. Yeah, so, I'm kind of concerned that it's their franchise. So there's there's that, but I'm happy it's coming. I'm looking forward to it. I know it's going to be inundated with awful glitches, DLC and, and pre-order bonuses yeah. and whatever. So I'm hoping it doesn't ruin the game too much because I'll I'll probably get it, and I'll probably get it on PC where I will begrudgingly reinstall origin onto my computer mm. but i'm looking forward to it it should be really good because yeah it's it's more open world you can go in any direction you want um i i hope it just maintains some sort of focus because i don't like open world games that sort of lose focus i feel like there needs to be some focus i feel like it can be incredibly hard to maintain focus in games like those just because they are so open world and it feels like you can go anywhere and do anything like i don't i'm, I'm always impressed when they manage to maintain that focus that you're talking about yeah i'm actually very surprised that they chose to go open world i mean i expected more that they would continue to go with levels but just give a lot more well everything options. in the gaming industry is open world these days if you can't not be open world or you're not cool and no one's gonna buy you and mirror's edge as a franchise well, it's not a franchise. Mirror's Edge is becoming a franchise, and I, I don't feel like it can... I feel like it almost can't afford to not be open world with what it is, so... Good point. I mean, in terms of sales numbers, I mean, they could they could make a great game and it not be open world, but they can't sell it, and it's not open world, because that's just not where we are anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, and I'm sure, like, throughout the open world, there will be plenty of... They'll sort of change it where all the challenges in Mirror's Edge in the original game were sort of, like their own thing and now i'm sure it'll be included inside the game like oh hey here's a little challenge for you to do in this open world and you'll just go right into it uh so, do you want to move on number absolutely 40. number 44 for me uh this is the first of four metroid games on my list i believe it is metroid prime 2 echoes on gamecube uh, this is actually down eight spots from last year, but every time I think about it, I think I'm underrating it. Um, I might go back and play this again as one of my replays for 5252, because uh, this is a really, really good game. I love the Dark World aspect of it. Even It does feel a little bit a link to the past at times, but I feel like it puts its own little twist on it, because the Dark World is incredibly dangerous. Um, you actually feel like you are in danger the entire time that you're there. You feel less powerful than the world around you. Yeah, which is you not never want to be in the dark world. It's just that's like, not uh... something that you feel very often in a Metroid game. Like you feel like you're dominating because you're Samus and you are like all powerful and you can kill anything. But in the dark world, you legitimately feel threatened. There's a ton of great like boss enemies in the dark world that you have to go and fight. And there's one specifically I remember in uh, Aegon, not Aegon Waste, uh, the Torvis Bog. Um, it's this like big you played the game right yes i did you it's the big fish like at the very very bottom of torvis bog and that's when you get like the underwater jetpack thingy which i'm doing a really good job describing everything right now but that <laughs> that boss fight was so memorable it's the first boss in metroid aside from the final boss in metroid prime uh that i almost died on uh on on regular difficulty so not the boost guardian uh isn't it the boost guardian the boost guardian is is, is that it? Is that for I, the boost ball, or is that the... No, I'm talking about the underwater, like, jetpack booster that you get that lets you jump yeah. underwater, kind of like the gravity suit in the first game. I don't believe that's it. The boost guardian well, is, like, I, the, the blob, the morphing blob, I believe it is. Oh, yeah, I remember that, too. And uh, that well, one is uh, 
consider like it was so difficult that in the Metroid Prime trilogy they actually nerfed the boss. Really? Well, I, uh, anyway, I I played the trilogy version first, so I don't know. But anyway, um, I think I I'm clearly woefully unprepared to do this. But anyway, Metroid Prime Two Echoes is fantastic. It's criminally underrated at this point. I actually know a couple people who think this is the best Metroid Prime game of all. It's definitely the most difficult, um, and it's it's definitely the most um was well, definitely the most underrated that, that's not even a question some people yeah, don't a lot like of people the game forget about it just just because of the design i really like the enemy design i love the dark and the light world but uh, i think it speaks for my love to, for the rest of the series that even this game which is fantastic is only number 44 on my list and it's also down from last year last year it was number 36 so more games to come see ahead just, of it. we just had too many new games there's a lot of good games, people. If you didn't know, like, there's a lot of good games in the world. Go play some of them. Just new, better games came out, and yep, that's all she wrote. Give me some of your, give me your 44. 44 is a game that was not on my list last year. All right. And we just covered this recently, or I did, and that is Perfect Dark. Perfect Ooh. Dark making it nice. back into my top 50, which I Welcome never really back. expected. And maybe it's just because it's the Xbox Live Arcade version. Um, I don't know. I feel, like I, I feel like I would like it regardless of what system I had played it on. But going back and playing it, it was it was fun. I had an absolute blast. I love how much depth the game has. I feel like a lot of games lack that kind of depth. I mean, it, it's a game where you play it once and then it's totally worth playing it again because you're going to play it on the easiest difficulty and then you're going to play it on secret agent and then you're going to play it on perfect agent and it you get to sort of see how how the game progresses as you go through those difficulties and um sure a lot of it is just like you have to find a new place to go first before you can go to the next objective and it's not particularly challenging to figure it out but there are things where it's it encourages like a little bit of exploration and experimentation. Uh, like one of my favorite moments is in Data Dine Infiltration, I believe it is. You have to open up a maintenance hatch, and I think that's it. Or you, you have act to okay. Sorry, you activate a little. Uh, hovering little bot that like floats along the surface of the ground and like i think it's like cleans up the floor or something uh -huh. it looks like a vacuum like a tiny little uh dirt uh what are those called dust busters roombas roombas yeah because my mom had a roomba when we were growing up and that thing would always get caught on like the stupidest like look like a piece of string it couldn't vacuum up a piece of string on the floor <laughs> so pathetic. anyway you, yeah you follow it and then it opens up like in order to clean or go wherever it does maintenance it opens up a door that seems completely hidden. Like you would never notice that there's a door here because it looks like essentially the wall. And you have to go down there and then activate another little robot to access later parts of the level. So I, just, I don't know, I just found Stupid it. Roombas giving away all the secrets and not cleaning properly. Jerks. The game just has so much depth to it. It has all these super cool weapons. Um, I recently enjoyed a little thread on uh, Neo GAF uh, where they were talking about the best reload animations of all time and several of the weapons in Perfect Dark were obviously mentioned because yeah they have all these cool weapons with neat little reload animations so Perfect Dark making it back on my list real quick I'm, I'm hearing a little like I don't know if is that feedback from your end now oh hearing my like, gosh Ooh. it's a it's it's a lawnmower. Oh, it's a lawnmower. Okay. Of well, hopefully course. it's not being picked up that much. Okay, so forgive the lawnmower noises, everybody. That's what that is. We just have all kinds of noises happening around our uh, our little studio today, which is not a studio. But uh, number 43, we're just going to keep rolling, keep rolling on here. Uh, oh, shoot, that's yours. Where's my number 43? Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, uh, it's this. No, it's uh, NBA Jam on Nintendo Wii. And this is an interesting one. This is actually a new what? one for me as well. I actually first played this game a number of years ago, but I only discovered the true beauty of it this year for the first time while playing it at a friend's house during a party. And everybody just got really into it. And it was so exciting to see all my friends just picking up the Wii remotes and just having a really good time with uh, NBA Jam. Bunch of players 
these are not sports people. These are not my friends are not sports fans. So, uh, you know, to know to just to be having fun with with, you know, people like Amari Stoudemire who are terrible now. It, and it's just it's uh, it's hilarious. If you've never played an NBA Jam, it's like an arcade basketball game, much like the next game I'm going to talk about on my list. Um, it's it's totally over the top. It's insane. There's hilarious commentary. It's they coined the term boom shakalaka, you know, all that all this stuff. So it's that's great. actually a series where I feel like it should still be around and it should be getting yearly just yearly roster updates like a five dollar download i'm not sure what i mean they, they can't do anything else with this series it's it's so perfect on Wii. it's like if they tried to add anything i feel like it would be a mess it, i mean i like that, that's I what i mean fact. it's just like buy the new edition for five bucks and or i shouldn't say that i should say like download the updated roster for five bucks i mean it is then, made by ea sports so i'm kind of surprised that's not an option but uh anyway yeah the ea sports team i should say Man, that lawnmower is loud. I hope it's I not know. picking it up too much. On, oh well, we'll just keep going, keep going. This, What's your forty-three? This this poor, this poor uh, episode. I know this episode has gone through so much to go to go into your ears. You better be liking it. So apologies for the lawnmower people. Can't help it. Those darn neighbors. I'll, I'm I mean, gonna, t- I'm shaking go, my fist go, at them right now. <laughs> Go outside and be know. like, "Hey, I'm recording an important podcast that like 40 people are going to listen to. Can you can you cool it for like 40 more minutes?" <laughs> uh, so, NBA Jam, good choice. Yeah, NBA Jam, great game. Great, actually, yeah. Again, I wish that it had more uh, more recent editions. But you can play as the Beastie Boys. My and, and, and various presidents. My number 43, which uh, is a bit of a shock to anybody who's known me for a while is oh this is great the wind waker hd so yeah the legend of zelda the wind waker hd for the uh nintendo wii u now before you go any farther um first of all why hd and secondly why is it a surprise that this is on your list actually go the other go the other way why is this a surprise that this is on your list this is a surprise because i have ripped on the wind waker for pretty much a decade for being a bad game. You well, were not really a bad game, more like a just like not good enough for the Zelda series game. And you were you were the original the Wind Waker sucks LOL guy, right? Pretty much. You were part of that that little group. Yep. I definitely was. And I was actually before the game even came out. It was sort of weird because I was one of the few people on the that really sort of stood by the graphics and was like, you know what, the graphics don't matter. What matters is how the game plays. If the game plays great, then who cares? And it did, and we were all happy because the Wind Waker is a great game. And I don't care what you say. I will still stand by how, that GameCube version. That's not how I think it was it's, for me. Okay. Pretty much, because you know I love exploration. And I do know Waker, you love exploration. The Wind Waker has exploration. Yes, it does. It's the fake, for but me it's, is, it's exploration. Yeah, it's definitely very fake. It's linear exploration. Is I played the game, and immediately, like, as soon as I got the sail and I could sail anywhere I wanted to, I just completely forgot about the main quest. And I just sailed and I explored every single uh, tile in the map and, yeah, filled up my entire map. And then I was sort of sick of the exploration at that point. And then the game is asking me, hey, you need to go here, you need to do this, go here. It has sort of stuff that's like built in, like this is gonna, you're just gonna explore it naturally if you- It's it's built to take you to the places that you need to explore, basically. Yeah, and- Like on the way to the forest haven, you'll find Fire Island and you'll be like, oh, I should come back here later when I have something that can put out the fire. Exactly. But you've already been there. Yeah, so I would sort of experienced everything that the world had. And so now I was just stuck sailing these seas in this really slow boat. And it just drove it, me They nuts. call it a ship, okay? It's not a boat. Yeah. It's a ship. It's a boat. It's a little, uh, what's what's the word for like tiny it's boats? A dinghy, I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. So I was just, I was tired of it at that point. Um, it was weird because I had actually played the game like nonstop for probably two weeks. And then as soon as I had filled out the whole map and it got to the Triforce fetch quest. 
Ugh. I was I like Ugh. stopped. I didn't play the game for several months. I will defend Wind Waker all the way up to that Triforce fetch quest, which is obnoxious beyond belief. So, um, but yeah, like Windfall was great. Like yeah, all those little things with Windfall Island I had experienced. It was just the sailing killed the game for me. It was so slow. It was so excruciatingly bad. Um, one of my other issues with it is, and I've talked about this with one of the games I played in our 52 for 52 is uh, Sid Meier's Pirates, which does a very good job like trying to accurately depict sailing, and it makes sailing very interesting and an engaging part of the game. The Wind Waker completely throws out how sailing actually works. You can't tack into the wind at all. If you like try to go parallel to, or, or uh, perpendicular to the wind, you're not going to go like anywhere fast. And that drove were, me nuts. Were you in the sailing club in high school? Did you have a sailing club? I had a sailboat as a kid. Wow, so. wow, rich kid. Not a not a big not a big sailboat. A very not a big sailboat. Very very small, not expensive sailboat. We didn't we didn't have a sailing club or anything. But like I like I would always hear about the sailing club, and I'm like, that sounds so nerdy. And the way you describe tacking into the wind, it just sounds really nerdy. So <laughs> anyway, you know what makes sense. So wait, so what about the Wind Waker HD changed for you that made you put it on your list here so that we can move on? I mean, I know obviously the sailing is faster because you get the, the, the sail. Yep. Pretty, pretty much the, the fast sail does you, you don't even need to so play the much song. for the game. Yep, you don't, have, you don't need to play the song, the fast sail. A lot of the things that you do need to access, like uh, I believe the, the, the screen at the bottom makes things items a lot easier to access. Oh, yeah, it's that so That was one great. of the other the, issues the with... Uh, the Wind Waker is just like you had to have the sail equipped all the time and you had to have the Wind Waker equipped all the time, especially when you were on the sea. So pretty much any time you're on the sea, you have those two items equipped. No and you have like what. one item. It's either and the then grappling have, hook or the bombs. Yeah. And then you have one other item. Yeah. So grappling hook or the bombs. So there are four crucial items that you need to use while you're sailing and you only have space for three of them. Or bait, or the bait for the fish. Five. Hoy there. So the Wind Waker HD cleaned that up, made it, uh, gave dedicated buttons to, I believe, both the Wind Waker and the sail. Yes. Um, so they cleaned that up. Uh, they gave you the fast sail, which makes sailing so much quicker. You don't have to worry about what direction you're going in. Um, and even then, like changing the direction was a lot easier because you could quickly use the Wind Waker anytime. They cut out where when you play a song, it would always replay the song back. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, they, they did? I didn't even know that. Yeah, so like... I did not notice. That's crazy. So when you like change the wind direction, instead of you playing it and then Link doing it again... Ba, or, ba, ba, yeah. Yeah, you heard it over and over again. It's just like you play it and then you change the wind right away. Nice. That's so, cool. They streamlined a lot of the game, and it was and a it's game beautiful, that, right? It's yeah, the game not, needed th to be streamlined. I think it's gorgeous it looks, on Wii U. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Yeah, it yeah. looks. I mean, absolutely at, at times, amazing. Even with like the cell shaded, you know, like it's super cell shaded, cartoony style. Like in the GameCube version, you could still see like where the textures weren't as good, but they cleaned all that stuff up, and the game just looks fantastic from like from the top of the map to the bottom of the map. Like just the whole, every single island just looks fantastic. The only thing that I do not like about the new graphics is how it changed um, the way that the torches cast light. Oh, yeah. It's kind of weird. So that's, like that's the only thing that changed that I don't really like with the graphics. Otherwise, it looks fantastic on Wii U and really can't suggest the game more. Yeah, um, we need to move on. We spent a long time on that one. Wind Waker so, HD, like, like ten, number ten minutes, 43, and it sounds like I should put it in my top 10. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go really quick because I don't have much to say about this one either because it's basically the same as NBA Jam. Number 42, NFL Blitz 2000 on Nintendo 64. Now, this is a game, this game is freaking insane. Like, if NBA Jam is over the top, this game is, like, over that the top. That game is so much fun with friends. And overflowing. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll play this with my friend who loves football. And it's just, like, it's, like, heart-pounding, like, pulse quickening action the entire time and the best thing is like when you tackle someone you can like bring all your other defenders over there and just keep tackling them like while they're already on the ground and like do all do these wrestling moves and it's, it's incredibly violent and it's hilarious um, and you know it's sort of interesting the commentator is always even, like 
Was that necessary? Yes, it was necessary. I need to hit him as hard as I can. Could they even release a new NFL Blitz game with today's uh, NFL image? I don't know if it would ever go over just because the whole point of that game was like incredible violence and like over the top, just kind of everything. Like it felt like every play was just like three deep routes down the field and that was it. Yep. So Pretty much. I mean, it's just, that game is just insane. It's so much fun though. It's it's hilarious. I, I I'm always in hysterics by the end of it. We have to stop because we're laughing too hard. So Great that's game. probably like unintentionally. It's probably the funniest game on on my list. Probably both of our lists. So, All right. So that's my pick. Uh, that's a brand new game. Uh, it actually almost made my list from last year, but this year I I, I decided to just add it straight up. So good job. That, yep. I approve. So uh, my number forty two is actually another Legend of Zelda game. Uh, I think I have four Legend of Zelda games on my list, so... I didn't count. It's three or four, something like that. So, yeah. next game this is... This is a good a, choice, though. Good, Very good choice. Actually, the m- most recent one, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Until a couple weeks from now, yeah, when the new 3DS Zelda game comes out. And I pretty much think that A Link Between Worlds, other than a few quirky things with the controls, is the best designed top-down Zelda game there is. That's quite a statement for someone who thinks the original Legend of Zelda is the best Zelda ever made. Or whatever whatever it is. I it, Just the game design of it is spectacular. And um, they pretty much took the link to the past map, but they made it a lot more open, I guess you could say. So a lot of areas are a lot easier to access than before, where you'd have to like go around and take the a long way around now there's just sort of like a shortcut that cuts right through the middle of the map yep um all the exploration instead of having to pull out items and um i guess yeah use the items to access new areas the game pretty much lets you go anywhere right away so you can explore the game however you want uh you can get items however you want because you buy it from ravio and i don't know it just something about how they changed the game to free it up and encourage you to do whatever you want. It felt like a completely new Zelda experience, didn't it? Like it didn't feel like any other Zelda game that had ever been out there. It definitely didn't. Yeah. I mean, it felt like a link to the past just because of what it was. But apart from that, like structure wise, it, it just felt very, you felt very free to do almost anything. Exactly. And, uh, oh yeah, with the exploration, all you had to do was, Pretty much all the exploration was based around just merging into the wall and using the two D like the two dimensional mode, which, which added for some a, for some reason a lot of people didn't like that concept, but I always did. I thought it was great. I find it amazing that you wouldn't just because it was quick, extremely quick to do. The animation like as you merge into a wall is almost instant. Yeah, and then it makes you rethink how you uh, perceive the world. Yep. Um, I remember there, there were some great rooms that had puzzles where you'd be looking at it and you'd be like, I have no idea what to do. And then you'd be like, wait, I can just go into the wall and move over here. Like, even late in the game, I would be doing this. And I'm like, what, am I just stupid? Like, how am I not remembering about this mechanic? <laughs> I, but, uh, I, I remember, like, some of the, like, one of the dungeons had secret passageways um, that you had to be really paying attention in order, in order to find. And it had nothing incredibly special to find. But it was just the fact that it was there that was really cool. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, A Link Between Worlds. Good one. Definitely the most streamlined, top-down Legend of Zelda there is. I can't really suggest it higher. When I'm working, I recommend that game to everyone who comes in, like, asking for a game for 3DS. Because I think it's one of the best games on there, like, for for either a veteran player or for a, a brand new player. I just think the whole experience is fantastic. Yep. from beginning to end so um it's yeah. the actual new game has really disappointed me after we had a link between worlds uh number 41 for me and we gotta go quick uh metroid prime the second one on my list it's metroid prime pinball on ds wait uh, what yeah so what? metroid prime don't what me this is a great game okay if you whether or not you actually like pinball games this is a immensely enjoyable experience um it has hey, all the you're talking you to like, somebody who beat sonic pinball 
or I should say Sonic Spinball. Okay, stop interrupting me and let me finish my sentence. <laughs> this this game is it's bursting with like stuff from the original Metroid Prime game. It feels very nostalgic as soon as you start playing it because you're like, oh, this reminds me of the time in Metroid Prime when I did this. And I'm such a big Metroid Prime fanatic that like, you know, I just I, I want more and Metroid Prime Pinball gives me more and it also gives me a very solid pinball experience that's addictive. You can just pick it up and play it, you know, for 20 minutes until you're dead because you suck at it. And then uh, and that's it. And uh, it, it's it's on my list just because I, I feel like it's not recognized as a great game. And I feel like it should be because I feel like it's a great experience. Now, what's your complaint? That's a reasonable way or a reasonable reason, I should say. Reasonable uh, reason. No, I'm just yes. saying that'd be like me putting Sonic Spinball or uh, Kirby's Pinball on my list. Or Mario Pinball Land or whatever. Actually, that game is terrible. Kirby's Pinball is actually a phenomenal game. I'm going to say it, it right now. Although the only issue with it is uh, once you get good at it, it's a little easy because you can actually control, you can sort of control Kirby as you play the <laughs> pinball game. So you can just, it gets pretty easy to do the same things over and over again. And yeah. I actually got to the point where I rolled over the score, oh, the high geez. score. So I you rolled got, it over. Did you get a kill screen or is it just, uh, does it keep going? It it like just starts over. Like I intentionally got it filled all the way and then I lost all my lives. And then I was like, wait a second. I'm not, my score doesn't count. It doesn't go on the top 10 list, but I rolled it over. And pretty much after that point, I was done with that game. Wait, so, so you know how, um, like we, we talked about your world records last week. I bet you're the world record holder for Kirby Pinball. I doubt it. There has to be somebody else who's rolled over. Nobody the... else would roll over the score in that game before shutting it off. I will say it took a long time. <laughs> a exactly. Lot of, you should have reported that. That's too bad. All right. Uh, what's your 41? Uh, my number 41 is a game that I don't I don't even know why I didn't include it on my list last year. I think I just it just didn't come to mind for whatever reason while I was making my list. Uh-huh. Even though it should have. And that is the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim. Huh. Which That that didn't come to your mind last year? No. How long has it been out now? Like since 2012? I don't know. I don't know. It feels like it's been out forever. I think Even it's been 2012 it's a relatively or 2011. I think, I'm just, I think I'm just Skyrimed out because so many people talk about it at my job. So it's like... Still? I mean, it's like Grand Theft Auto V. It's just a day goes by and I sell another copy of Skyrim. I sell another copy of Black Ops 2. I sell another copy of GTA V. And that's Unbelievable. those are like the three games. And, well, Skyrim pretty much... It just... It does a great job with the exploration. I mean plain and simple there's so much to that game i still haven't even figured out the labyrinthian but i haven't played skyrim in a while so you know i'll forgive myself for that even though yeah. i put like 400 hours into the game i think my counter on um steam is actually at over 700 hours and that's so, split so time you, you play it on your pc and what uh my pc pretty much just your pc okay yeah and that's yeah. one of the other reasons why I have it on my list is because the PC version of Skyrim has the best mod support of probably any game since, I don't know, Doom. The original Doom. It is yeah, amazing. Yeah, I've, I've seen the Skyrim game. I see the Skyrim mods on YouTube and stuff, and there's some pretty insane stuff in there. Yeah, and you can... I mean, there's mods to essentially make the game still look really good years later. Um in some cases, even better than a lot of modern games. They'll they'll kill your video card, yeah. but you can mod the game pretty much any way you want. Um, you can add new quests. You can there's there's been like whole new practical games created from mods. You can change the way that the magic system works. You can change the way the combat system works. Um, so the game. It always has something new to provide, I guess, through that mod scene. And even then, just the base game is so good that you'll spend time exploring, playing it, and you'll completely forget about the main quest. You'll be over 150 hours into the game, and you'll be like, wait a second. I'm like, I've been completely ignoring the main quest to this game for the last, like, 70 hours I've played. Hours. Yeah. yeah. You just completely forget about the main quest because it's easy to get sidetracked 
and uh, explore the world and have yeah. fun killing dragons. The main reason I haven't touched that game yet is just because I'm terrified of what it's going to do to my personal life. Like, I already work 35 hours a week, you know. I, I don't have that many more hours a week to spare. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Ha has your wife played it yet? No. She doesn't play video games that much. She That is She's a not a that she gamer. would really enjoy. What What image? Skyrim. She your would wife enjoy... would really enjoy Skyrim. Why would she enjoy Skyrim? I, I'm i just telling you. I, I would, I would enjoy her enjoying Skyrim so that I could do my own thing. But, because, uh... uh <laughs> That's terrible. I hope she doesn't listen to this. <laughs> That's sort of what my girlfriend at the time really enjoyed. She loved Skyrim, and she wasn't uh, that big of a gamer. So if you're listening, shout out to Piddle's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> All right. So uh, so good way to end that segment, I think. Why don't we quick run down our uh, 50 to 41? Yes. Uh, for me, The Legend of Zelda, 3D Movie Maker, Pikmin 3, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Mario Strikers Charged, Journey, Metroid Prime 2, NBA Jam, NFL Blitz 2000, Metroid Prime Pinball. All right, and mine is number 50, Shenmue, Deus Ex Human Revolution, No More Heroes 2, Mario Kart Double Dash, Minecraft, Mirror's Edge, Perfect Dark, uh, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, and The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Very unique lists, I think. I don't think anyone... I'm curious. To, I, I I want our audience to start posting their lists, and I think they will, because um, oh, yeah, some they people will. have said they they're going to. But we have a lot to cover still, um, and I don't have much time to do it. So let's let's try to figure out how we're going to do this. First off, we're we played through quick. We played a lot of games this week, or at least I did. How many games did you play? Uh, I only played the two games we talked about NFL. Okay, well, two games is good. That's, week. that's above pace. So yeah, and NFL. I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did oh, beat it though. So hold oh, like, on. I've started it. Okay, but hold on. We have to go through this. I'm, I'm sad that we have to spend so much time on this garbage, but here we go. So Piddle and I made an impulse decision to buy NFL 2K5 last week. We both did. Piddle is playing NFL 2K5. I have not played it yet because even though I got my copy a day before he did, I got it in terrible condition. Thanks, JJGames.com. You are now dead to me, and you will not be a sponsor of our show ever. I sent it back, and they're going to be sending me a new copy. But it was it was so scratched it was unplayable, couldn't load up a game. I was very upset. So, meanwhile, my copy was in pristine condition. Yes, and it was cheaper. You jerk. So <laughs> it was forty cents cheaper. Big deal. So how is it? How is it though? You, we haven't talked about this. How oh, is it controlled? So Just briefly. It's been so long since I've actually it hasn't even been that long. I've played what Madden twenty five. What was Ugh. that? Last Ugh. two years ago. Who, yeah. Who cares? Anyway. It controls so much better. The, the <laughs> ten-year-old game better than the Madden menu 25. The experience is I just remember Madden 25. The menus were so slow; they were so bad. Getting into game took forever. I I loathed it. And this game, it's just like everything is streamlined. It's really quick. The graphics actually look pretty darn good. Um, Have you tried the crib mode yet? The I crib? just. I like explored it for like ten minutes this morning, and I was like, "Wait, what? What is this? What is why are this? You, like, why is there Animal Crossing in an NFL game?" <laughs> so, basically, what it is. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, you get to do whatever you want. Yeah. I I would like went to like the kitchen area, and like the phone is. Did you Did you make right, a sandwich? Right, the phone has like a message on it, and I have a message from Steve-O saying, "Hey, man, let's play a game." And I'm like, "What? What?" What is going on here? You why just am keep I scrolling down. And there's a message from your cousin. Hey, we should go bowling. Or why something. am I getting Why am I getting challenged from Stevo to play a game of football? This makes no sense whatsoever. Who's Stevo? Stevo from uh, the um, MTV show Jackass. Oh, that's okay. I thought so, Stevo was just like a guy in the game. <laughs> nope, not okay. at all. Well, that's kind no, of funny. Definitely not Minecraft Steve though. Okay. So, yeah, it's. The, the controls are pretty darn good. Uh, the gameplay, I can instantly tell that there's so much more depth. Like, the way the players collide and interact with each other is completely different from Ugh, even... That's so, that's so sad. Even it's Madden sad that 25. a 10-year-old game is just better than a new game. It's gross. Come so, on, EA. Um, I'm actually... I talked to you about somehow trying to find a way to get modern rosters onto that game. Too much work for me, but are you actually going to do that? 
I think I might actually try to do it. Wow. Well, good luck to you, sir. Because what I've played so far, I've only played like one quick game of it, but I really enjoyed it. So. All right. Yeah. Well, we, we will talk about that later. I've got several games to get to. I'm just going to tease a couple of them. Um, I started uh, yesterday. I started Pikmin 2 again for a replay and Pokemon Leaf Green again also for a replay. I noticed I was I had like no replays this year, so I decided to do a couple. Um, and those games are still amazing. Uh, and then I also played two new games this week, and I also hit a replay as well. I'm scrolling down, trying to find it here. Here we go. Let me start with a game that I bought last week, or uh, I think it came out on the 29th or something. It's called Persona 4 Dancing All Night. It's a, it's a sequel, kind of, to Persona 4 Golden. It's a rhythm game, and it's, a, uh, it's an interesting one. It has a very, very wordy story mode uh, where I felt like I spent more time reading text than I did actually doing the, the dances and the, the rhythm part of the game. You probably did. Yeah. And honestly, the the rhythm part of the game with the songs and everything is really good. It's a really interesting style of gameplay. I recommend looking up a video. I'm not going to link one in the description because I'm too lazy. So just look up a video of Persona 4 Dancing All Night. And uh, it's, it's pretty crazy looking. And then you actually play it and you realize that it's every bit as hard as it looks. It's not easy, and uh, I'm, I'm currently on hard mode, and I'm working through some of the harder songs, and it's it's tough, and the the scoring system is not forgiving either. It's like if you miss a couple, like you're going to fail the song. So um, you have to be really good, just like any traditional Japanese game. You have to be really good at it. All right. Uh, and the story sucks. I give Persona 4 Dancing All Night a 4 out of 5. Not a bad score. Because I, I beat the story mode. I, I've beaten most of the songs, so I'm, I'm confident giving this score. It's a it's a good game. It's not worth eighty bucks. It's not worth the eighty bucks that I paid for it to get all the bonus content stuff. But Persona Four Golden was so good, and I only paid like fifteen for that. So I'm kind of trying to balance it out in my mind, saying like, well, maybe I spent You're fifty supporting on the, supporting, yeah, I'm supporting the developers because it's all the same people. It's Atlas, you know. So yep. yeah. So uh, give me your next game that you beat. Uh, I also beat Shovel Knight, which is a game that you beat earlier oh. in the year, right, for Vita. Oh, so good. And I played it on Wii U. Uh, Because that's just what I happen to have it on, and it's so good. It's like we were talking about it, um, like while I was in the process of beating it, and I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And in fact, I didn't like it as much as I thought I was going to, like in the early goings. Um, It's just like, well, this is kind of a generic eight-bit game, and then near the end, it just starts getting hard, and it opens up, you know, the the ideas, and all the levels just get really, really good, and it's just so good. And it's probably the best 8-bit style game I've ever played. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if next year it knocks The Legend of Zelda off my list. Because, honestly, it's it's better than that game. And that's the only 8-bit game I have on my list. So It, it is a fantastic game. Like, like, everything. The music, the controls, the graphics. Everything just comes together in this brilliant package. And you can I feel like I can go back and play it again. Even though it's, it's what, 6 hours probably m- maximum. Yeah. I think I beat it in about 5. Um, I didn't like try to do any of the extra stuff. I just sort of played through it, and uh, man, it's it's so hard. It's like legitimately challenging at the end, but it's so rewarding when you finally beat that last boss. How I describe it is, uh, if you look at wh- when I played like Mega Man Nine, I expected to sort of get an eight bit experience and just yeah, like sort of revisit a classic franchise and yeah. enjoy it again. Yeah. But when I played a sh- like I was that's what I was expecting with Shovel Knight. But when I actually started to play it, it was so much more. It it blew, it really blew me away how modern they made the game, while keeping it very they true to like eight bit. They retained style. that eight bit charm. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's really incredible feat that the developers over at Yacht Tree did. I'm really really pleased with it. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of like developers that I am eagerly anticipating their next title they are right at the top yeah like this and probably like the zero escape games are probably like my surprise games of the year that i didn't know were going to be awesome but they were um so i mean this game's right up there with them like it got a lot of praise but i just didn't i didn't see it coming it was it was it totally blindsided me about a little over halfway through the game i started thinking oh my gosh this game is actually really really amazing so if you haven't played Shovel Knight, you are waiting for... I don't know why you're waiting. Like, what is wrong with you? Just go buy it. It's like 20 bucks. <laughs> All right. So uh, do you want to go with your last game, or should I go ahead with mine? You do one, because I, I already kind of mentioned Pikmin 2 and Leaf Green, so... 
All right. So uh, the one game that I did beat this week is a replay for myself. Um, and that is, it's actually been a while since I did a replay. The last one was Perfect Dark. But it was Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. And sort of coming off of Metal Gear Solid 5, I, I just wanted to go back and experience my personal favorite game in the series. So going into it, I don't know, it's actually been a while since I've replayed it, but uh, back when it came out, I played it over and over and over again. Um, most recent time I played it was probably like four years ago, but I didn't quite beat it. Uh -huh. And so this time around, I actually, uh, I actually ended up purchasing it uh, on the PlayStation Vita, the HD edition, even though I already have the HD edition on PlayStation 3. You poor sap. Just got to have more Vita games, just like me. That's pretty much it. I bought but, the I bought the Walking Dead and the Wolf Among Us j on, on Vita just to have more Vita games, even the, though I probably should have bought them on console or PC. I don't know. like Something about having these console indie titles available on the go is so so convenient i yeah it's it's nice i think it's almost the best way to play a lot of games those indie games um but playing on the vita i was once again blown away by just one how amazing the game looks i cannot believe that this game came out in what like 2001 and the art style for it for a realistic style game the art direction is fantastic probably better than any other playstation 2 xbox generation game um are you even there yeah, i'm there i'm here you're just so quiet i'm like don't worry a it's, it's all getting, talking to myself it's all getting edited out don't worry maybe not this is effortless we'll see this is effortless so, uh, yeah, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I can't believe that the game came out on PlayStation 2 in 2001. And not only that, but it came out and it played at 60 frames per second. <laughs> and even the sequel, Metal Gear Solid 3, wasn't at 60 frames per second. But, yeah, this is a game that was 60 frames per second, like, and looked so good that it was one of, like, the... It was probably to the PlayStation 2 what uh, Gears of War was to the Xbox 360. That's a really good comparison. I like that one a lot. Um, Cuz you're you're right. It really showed off what that system could do, which it, which it to really be completely did. fair, not a lot. That's not a super powerful no. system and that game really took advantage of it. And yeah, there's like so much detail to the world. It's incredible how much detail there is. A lot of people hate the game and they really rip on it because it sort of does a bait and switch with what character uh, you play the game as, and I'm not really going to worry about too many spoilers because honestly, it's been 15 years, people. Well, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to play the Metal Gear Solid games though. Don't spoil. It I know. For me right I'm, now. I'm just... not going to spoil too much. I'm just going to say it does a li the little bait and switch, and how they handle the bait and switch. I think it just uh, it makes the main character of the series. I don't know if he can call him the main character anymore. It actually helps build his character and make his character that much more impressive. And enjoyable. Okay, well, now I'm thoroughly confused. Um, the story for the game, which after playing Metal Gear Solid 3 and Metal Gear Solid 4 and Metal Gear Solid 5, the story is just sort of a mess at this point. But at this, with Metal Gear Solid 2, it was still relatively not confusing. And the way that, yeah, this, the whole story of Metal Gear Solid 2, going back to it, playing it, it's not confusing to me anymore because I understand it, but... It is still one of the most enjoyable stories uh, in gaming that I think I've ever come across. It really carries the game well. Uh, it's a little disappointing that at some points you are listening to a conversation for 20 minutes straight, but... I mean, it, it, that, that sort of like comes with the territory, right? I yeah. Mean, that's any Metal Gear game. It, the same thing happened in the first game, and that was before they really had cinematic games. So. It was actually at the, I actually finished it just last night, and um, I was talking to my friend as I was doing it and telling him how I was playing it. He was like, oh, yeah, that's like the best game ever made. But I was telling him how we were planning to get some Perkins after I finished the game. So some what? Some Perkins. I don't, what is that? 
It's like a Denny's. Oh type my of god. Chain. Yeah. <laughs> late late night did, dining. Did you want did you, I'm just curious not to get too off topic, but did you watch that ZBN real life I did where I went to the fish concert with Sean and, and all that stuff? And no. we had Denny's after oh, we had Denny's afterwards and I took footage of it. And unbelievable. Just thinking back on that night, I just want to die again. <laughs> I died that night and I want to die again thinking about that food. <laughs> okay, so, um, continue. I'm sorry. So it's like I think it's like ten thirty at night. I'm telling him I'm playing the game. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to do the last two boss fights, which are back to back. And he's like, Oh, okay, so like you wanna meet there at you wanna meet there in like an hour? And I immediately tell him, Come on, man, you know how long these cutscenes are. I'll see you there at like <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. Nice. So I, I ended up seeing him at like 12.30 in the morning because I was actually playing at one of the harder difficulties and it's been so long that I sort of forgot how to do those fights uh, on the harder difficulties. Uh -huh. But still, it was maybe like 45 minutes of gameplay and like an hour plus of watching cutscenes. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, again, fantastic game. Um, just as good as I remember, still phenomenal. The gameplay is a little dated now compared, I mean, obviously compared to Metal Gear Solid 5 which, and Metal Gear Solid 4, which really sort of tightened up the controls uh -huh. and uh, changed the camera and how the camera works. The camera in Metal Gear Solid 2 is actually sort of frustrating at this point. But in the grand scheme of things, it was a pretty focused game in terms of the gameplay. The story was fantastic. Um, I'm can't give it a perfect score anymore just because the gameplay is so dated but the gameplay is still really good so i have to give it a 4.5 out of 5 very very nice so not not a waste of your time at all as I, I find i find going back to these some of these games that you loved like years ago can be kind of difficult um and actually i'm about to talk about that with with my next one but you know it's interesting because i'm not gonna say i sort of want to say it i'll say it anyway okay. motor solid 2 is on my top 50 okay and I was concerned going back and replaying it that I, after playing it, I'd be like, oh, it really doesn't belong where I put it in my top 50. Yeah, I feel the same way about my game. And uh, it used to be a top 10 game, and it's since dropped out. But still, like looking at where it is now, I'm completely happy with where I put it. Unfortunately, it has to stay where it is anyway. So, yep. I mean, remorse. But, um, oh, I forgot to score Shovel Knight. It's a five, by the way. It's, five. It's so good. And that's the third five I've given out in, like, five games. But I've, I've just been playing a lot of good games lately. That's what I Unfortunately, gave it, right? this next game did not hold up nearly as well as I was hoping it would. Um, and that game is uh, Pikmin on GameCube, the original Pikmin. And it's still very good. It's very enjoyable. I set a new record for the amount of time it took me to get all the parts and get all of them are off the planet. Uh, spoiler alert, he does make it off the planet if you get all the parts. And um, it took me 17 days. And uh, incidentally, um, I was just, I don't know, I was i was disappointed because I felt like a lot of the difficulty was, like, artificial. I used to think of Pikmin as this really challenging real-time strategy type game where you go around with your Pikmin and you, you know, you collect all the parts and you have to get back before a certain time. But, like, once you figure out a strategy, you can pretty much do anything in any order you want and it's it's it becomes really simple because you figure out what enemies you don't have to fight and you know fighting all the enemies is part of what made the original game so challenging but now i don't really have to fight anything because honestly if you just distract them with like a like a few pikmin you can honestly get any ship part back to your ship pretty quickly um and that's the approach that i took this time so i, I naturally i blasted through it in about five hours oh, and wow. uh yeah i i'm a pro at that game but it took the enjoyment out of it for me. So I almost wish I could go back again and just be like, wait a minute, I'm not going to play it this way. And so maybe that's partially on me, but it's also partially on the developers for not, you know, not seeing through that and being able to be like, well, you don't have, like, they should have made more of the enemies mandatory to fight because I, I felt like a lot of the time I was just sort of bringing the ship parts through and distracting the enemies as my Pikmin would go through the little area. So anyway... Pikmin is a great game. I'd still recommend it to anybody, but it's it's more of a four out of five because it just hasn't aged well. The controls aren't like super tight like they are in Pikmin too. So, yeah. All right. It, Pikmin is going to be in my top fifty, by the way. I do not think it's going to make my top fifty list next year, though, just based off of this experience. 
Maybe I'll go back and try it one more time, but I just don't think it's aged as well as it could have. So, so the end. We just passed the hour mark, I think, on this show. Yeah, we did. And I think that's where we're going to wrap up right Yeah, that's there. it. I, I don't think we have time for the bucket list this week, unfortunately, because I have to go to work in like a minute. That's so, fine. Yeah. We're going to do the bucket list next week. That's good, because I don't have a game to add this week, because I was being lazy and a slacker. So, If you liked our show, I don't know. Just do the stuff you usually do. I'm tired. I don't want to go to work today. I've got like an eight-hour shift ahead of me. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy it. No. As best as you can. Like the, like the video. Share it, too, because we're... Honestly, we call the show effortless, but there really a lot of effort goes into producing this. Like we have to take an hour out of our days. We have to talk to each other, which obviously we hate each other in real life. So like we don't like doing this. We do. <laughs> so, uh, so thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we uh, watch the videos in the description, so that way my effort into finding them isn't wasted. And I don't know. Enjoy the rest of your day or something. Perfect. How you doing over there, Piddle? What you got plans for today? Yeah, I do. All right. Well, enjoy your. Day. I have to work too. So. Oh really? Okay. Well, that sucks. Working yeah. sucks, kids. Enjoy this while. Like, I know you're all in school right now, but, you know, when you're not in school, really enjoy that time. Play a lot of games because I don't have a lot of time to play games, and I played like five games this week, and it was it was, it was sublime, honestly. But <laughs> we just don't get that time anymore. So. Nope. Yeah. I'm I'm struggling to keep up with our 50. You will out of 52. you will I'm catch like, up. I'm confident in you. I'm four. I'm like four games behind. I think at this point, maybe five. Yeah, that's good. And though. I'm just like, uh, I don't have any more time to catch Christmas, up. Christmas Christmas holidays though. We'll see. I will. I won't because I work retail, but I'm already ahead. So, anyway, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Longest outro ever. For Pit Doctor. For Dr. Spiegel and Mr. Piddle, I'm Dr. Spiegel. And, <laughs> I have no and, uh, idea what's going on anymore. I don't either. Goodbye. But goodbye. Yeah, bye. So step on up to the